Welcome back to Good Morning and Tika Barbuda for this Tuesday morning, January 6, 2015. I'm Alex Nicholas, sitting in this week on Good Morning and Tika Barbuda. On the couch next to me is Mr. Ian Lewis, and he is, in fact, the production engineer in the Water Business Unit and the Antigua Public Utilities Authority. Uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, first time interviewing you. We have some questions for, for you in the Water Division. Happy New Year. Well, good morning, and Happy New Year to you too, Alex. No. What's the situation with the water in Antigua Barbuda? Um, is there still a water rationing um, system happening right now? There's still in place what we call a water conservation method. Okay. And I can give you some background on that. Um, last year, we had Tropical Storm Gonzalo, and we had expected quite a bit of rainfall and runoff to replenish our surface water reservoirs. That did not happen during Gonzalo. But we did get some rain in November that replenished some of our reservoirs in Bendels. And provided about a quarter of the quantity of water required for uh, the Hot Rocks Reservoir. That does not put us in a situation that we are comfortable with. So the short answer is yes, we are still in a water crisis. Um, we need to get quite a bit of significant rainfall. We have also entered the dry period, which is January to June. And um, if we are not careful how we manage that water, we could be in for a similar situation. Come. No, because um, as I travel around St. John's, I, going up to the airport, that little pond there, on the left going up there, basically full. It's full with, full with, um, with water. How, how full is Pot, Pot Works Dam right Pot, now? Pot Works has about 8 to 10 feet, which mm -hmm. makes it about a third of the capacity. Mm -hmm. Pot Works hold just about a billion gallons of water, so we estimate we have just about 300 million. Mm -hmm. Which would be the equivalent of about a two to three months supply based on usage. Because people are saying that, okay, we see water and rain will be coming, like you said, in, in November, almost every other day rain will be coming. So some folks are wondering why we still have the, this water conservation um, system. Exactly. Well, um, we started the conservation methods back in, back in May uh, 2014. We have not returned to the levels of water in our reservoirs that we had before that period. So as far as the water business unit is concerned in APRA, we are still in a pretty serious sit, uh, situation. So what, what, what can we do now to, to alleviate this water problem that we have here? Well, internally at APRA, we are actually carrying out repairs to some of our own desalination units. Uh, we had gotten a grant from the government to purchase uh, membranes, and we expect to have these units up and running by, uh, I'd say, the end of January to full capacity. And as a other measure, we had also asked Semcorp, which is the water company that we purchase water from, to increase their production from a daily production of about 3.1 million gallons a day up to about 4 million gallons per day. So we have taken measures internally to increase water production, but we're still not at where we were prior to uh, May 2014. You mentioned, you mentioned Semcorp. What is the relationship now? You said they're, they're giving more uh, water production to, to, to APUA? Semcorp has a standing contract with APA to produce 3.1 million gallons per day. Presently, they're producing just about 4 million gallons per day, and this mm -hmm. was done in an effort to alleviate some of the problems we were encountering during the uh, crisis period. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, as you travel through St. John's, we see the works from APA, the water division, uh, fixing burst pipe all over. Is that a pro major problem, you know, burst pipe in different areas in Antigua? Well, um, something we have to take into account. When we have heavy rainfall, mm -hmm. there's movement of the earth. Every time there's movement of the earth, there's a possibility that pipes will break. And when we go through dry periods, there's also movement of the earth in another direction. <laughs> so if you get too much rain or you go through extensive dry periods, you can have broken mains. There has been a situation on the media, we understand where um, there have been some customers complaining they haven't had water since, I believe, last Friday. Mm -hmm. And the situation is we did have some problems coming from the Prime Booster Station. Through the Prime Booster Station, we serve about 80% or let's say 80% of the water we produce goes through that station. Mm -hmm. Since last Thursday to Friday, we have had three broken mains. The repair would encounter um, draining the pipe, repairing the pipe, and each time we do that, it takes about a day. So you, you can see why we're in that situation. Now, why do some people brag to me that, um, Alex, I have water all day. I, I don't have no problems with water. I, I said, what? You said, <laughs> certain areas of the country seem to be always having water. Is there a reason for that? Maybe they're close to a station or something? There's a reason for that. 
one, you could be close to a booster station where water has to be pumped from one location to the next in a major transmission line. Or two, you could be close to a reservoir and we fill our reservoirs basically in the evening. Mm -hmm. So in order to fill the reservoirs in the evening, water has to pass through that particular area mm. to cause that. So if you happen to be in those locations, you can probably experience to have water <laughs> oh, 90 to 100 percent <laughs> of the time. Now, what about the dams, the various dams and catchment areas in Antigua Barbuda? Are we, are we trying to improve that? I mean, um, fix them up? As you say, we're going to a dry period now, January. Are there plans to, you know, to reassure the, 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 the systems, the, the various dams, to get better, to, to, to hold well, more water? Well, presently, the dams we have in the Bendels Reservoir, most of them are about 80 to 100 percent full. Oh. So there can't be any work on them at this present time now that they're full. We did do some remedial work on um, a Hamilton Reservoir, mm -hmm. which we had a spillway that was damaged. Some remedial work was done on that. And um, apart from that, we haven't been able to do much, but we've been basically concentrating on our reverse osmosis desalination resources mm -hmm. and that we're trying to return to uh, the nameplate rating, 100% uh, capacity. And um, we're doing this basically in the event we have a dry uh, 2015. Uh, come the summer months mm -hmm. from, let's say, May beyond, we'll be in a better position than we were um, 2014. Are we using the, the reverse osmosis plants today? Yeah, those plants provide about um, 60 to 70 percent of the water we use. Mm -hmm. So when we have a transmission line breakage from crabs where we have one plant, the Semcor plant that produces about 80% of the water, you can see the seriousness of the nature. No, people are saying that uh, some of the quality of the water is something you can see the chlorine in the water. How safe is it, is it um, to have the chlorine in the water? Some people still drink pipe water. I grew up on drinking pipe water. How safe is it for people to use the pipe water to cook and to clean, to drink and all that? There may be a misconception because you really can't see chlorine in pipe water. Mm -hmm. You can smell it if it's above a certain level. But what you do see sometimes, you'll see the water looking white. White, yes, yes. And that's basically air. Oh, And okay. that's from a Enviable, unbeaten record. Triumph. Uh, that is pumping. You may have gotten some air into the line, and that's what air looks like. But if that water is left to sit for a period of time, it, uh, it then will, yeah, it'll yeah. get clear. So you mm -hmm. really don't see chlorine. What you're seeing is air. But is, 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 if it's, is it safe? Because some people say the chlorine and, you know, this and that. Is it safe to use to drink? And can people still drink pipe water? No, our water at APA um, has to go through or has to pass what's called the WHO standards. And that ensures that the water is what is called portable. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's safe for drinking. It has the correct amount of chlorine. There are no pathogens in it. And we're policed by the Central Board of Health that will do spot checks from time to time on the distribution system just to ensure that the water is um, of a high enough quality for drinking. There has been some debate that our water may be safer than some of the bottled waters I've you see that. on, I've heard that. on <laughs> the shelf. So. Uh, what, what, do you, what about people that have the tank, that get the, the, the rainwater, the catchment in the tank and so on, they, know, they, they don't treat it, they drink it right from the tank and so on. Would you advise them to probably have some kind of system to, to Clean the, water, clean the water, even boil it before they actually um, drink it? Well, boiling is one option. Mm -hmm. But normally what we suggest is that if you have water in a tank or a drum or a cistern, that you can contact either um, the Central Board of Health or APUA, and we can give you instructions and directions on how to treat that water to ensure that it's safe for mm -hmm. consumption. Okay, now let's look at the main catchment area, which is the potworks dam. Mm -hmm. um, some people have some concerns that, you know, it's, it's open pond, uh, open cash, cashment area, and they talk about animals roaming and so on. Are there systems in place to protect that very important major water catchment here in Antigua? Uh, I guess the answer would be no in terms of protecting it, but um, the treatment process that we employ ensures that if there are any uh, pathogens uh, that get into the water system on the back end, we'll treat and ensure that the water that is going out will be safe for drinking. Mm -hmm. any, any plans to maybe upgrade it to, to uh, especially a few months ago, it is literally dry. Uh, any plans to upgrade it, uh, improve it? Any, any plans in the pipeline for that? Uh, we have been looking at um, increasing storage, particularly within the Bendels Valley, because it's a lot easier to capture water within that area than it is in the Potworks Dam. Mm -hmm. um, we have no immediate plans for Potworks, but um, of course, there's all something on the table mm -hmm. that we can look at something, but immediately there are no plans for Potworks Dam. What about the, 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 um, 
the reliability of, of, of the pipe system. Um, we do have, because I saw um, the AP Women's fixing a pipe and I saw some a real big like iron pipe. Uh, are there plans to maybe remove those pipe and put in the PVC pipe? Any plans for that? Yeah, part of the continuous upgrade of APO is to look at removing pipelines that have exceeded their lifetime. And normally we look at pipes that have a life of between 25, maybe to 50 years. When we get to that stage, we look at uh, replacing. And um, there is a continuous program of upgrading and replacing pipe as, as the need arises. How many gallons of water does it take a Barbie that needs in a day to, to, um, to survive, as people would say? Okay, that is debatable, but um, we think somewhere between six and seven million gallons per day mm -hmm. is what is needed. How many are we getting now today? Uh, today? Uh, on production, we're doing about 5.5 .5 million gallons. Oh, pretty close. Pretty yeah, close but um, it varies based on the climatic situations. If we're having a drought, then that demand goes up because people who normally would survive on their systems, then they would be forced to come onto APOA um, system. And when they come, they take large volumes of water. We also have situations with the hotels who, although they're operating their desalination plants, when they have breakdowns, mm -hmm. they will call us on a moment's notice and say, we need an extra 100,000 gallons per wow. day. Wow. So we have to be in a position to uh, manage that, uh, whether it's six or seven million gallons, mm -hmm. just um, at the moment. What would you say to consumers now to, to, to really conserve what uh, things that they can do, even businesses, you mentioned hotels, and um, just everyday people, how can they, what, they can, what they can do to conserve water, knowing in fact that we're entering into another dry spell right now, what advice do you have for them? Well, the steps of conservation are pretty simple. You can start off with a simple shower. Mm -hmm. Keep your showers to less than five minutes. Uh, we have a tendency at this time of year, the water is a bit cold. <laughs> so people, <laughs> oh, yes. people will <laughs> let that pipe run for a couple of minutes before mm -hmm. they attempt to go under. So we encourage consumers to uh, keep your showers to less than five minutes. And keeping it to less than five minutes will save about 1,000 gallons per month. Mm -hmm. uh, we also encourage that if you uh, are using water, for example, washing dishes, Instead of just letting that run to waste, you can take that water and water your plants. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like uh, if, if you're washing a car, do not use a hose, use a bucket because you save more water that way. If you're doing laundry, uh, instead of doing a quarter load or half load, try to do a full load because mm -hmm. that's also a way of saving water. And mm -hmm. just basically lifestyle changes that, that will help in, um, in the conservation of water we encourage. Okay, well, um, any other final uh, maybe advice to, to, to the general public on the aspect of, of, of APOA and his water department? Any plans uh, for the new year, 2015? Any new initiatives? Okay, well, in the water business unit, we have uh, just released our work plan for 2015. And within the work plan, there are a few exciting things. Um, we continue to expand on desalination. We realize that uh, desalination due to climate change or climate variability may be the way that um, Antigua may, may have to go. We may have to become 100% um, reliant on desalination. So we're taking small steps mm -hmm. to uh, trying to achieve that. One of the things that we are doing, we are looking at putting uh, a new reverse osmosis plant within the English Harbor area to service uh, the yachting industry, because you know that that's very important. That industry mm -hmm. is on a thread when there's a water, water issue. That's right. So that's basically on the table right now. We're just looking at signing off on on those documents. We're also increasing storage um, in terms of um, our storage tanks. We have six new tanks under construction. Six. Six new tanks. Oh, okay. What um, are the areas? Any areas? Uh, one in Liberta, one in Wallens, one in Buckley's. There's going to be one in Barbuda. There's going to be one at Fry's and one at Collins. Okay. So that will provide us with probably an extra two to three million gallons of storage. And they're really at strategic areas around the island. Strategic areas, right. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we have planned within the water uh, business unit. And as we always say, we need to conserve and it's a lifestyle that we need to uh, practice here in Antigua because we are not fortunate enough to have <laughs> <laughs> heavy rainfalls and large storage of um, surface water, which mm -hmm. is a lot cheaper than desalination. Ooh, desalination plant, no final question. Um, are they located at crabs or different areas? The desalination plant, the major one, Semcorp, mm -hmm. which produces about 4 million gallons a day, is at crabs. APUA owns a plant at Camp Blizzard mm -hmm. that produces 
about 600,000 gallons per day, and mm -hmm. APRA also owns a plant at Fry's Beach that produces another 600,000. So they're strategically placed. Uh, the plant at Fry's takes care of, of customers from Jennings all the way to Old Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Camp Blizzard plant takes care of customers on the northern side of the island, the Hodges Bay, and basically the Semcorp plant will take care of um, the rest of the island. Any more plans to, to locate all the desalination plants? You mentioned reverse osmosis. Any well, reverse osmosis, osmosis yeah. desalination. Um, uh, any more, right. any, any other locations you're looking at to, to place any? Um, well, for the existing plants uh, at Camp Blizzard and Fry's, mm -hmm. there's a possibility that we can upgrade them to um, larger units okay. because uh, they're individual units. Some make about 100,000 gallons per day. There's a possibility that we may increase them to 200 or 300,000 gallons per day to mm -hmm. increase the capacity. But in terms of other locations at this point in time, um, it's still on investigation. Okay, so the advice to consumers, businesses, to, is to conserve water. Concern. And we how long is this dry period that, that we're going to be entering? January to? It's basically January to June when the hurricane season starts again. Wow, so January we, to June. So we, we must forward. conserve water. <laughs> we, we need to conserve. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. I've been speaking with Mr. Ian Lewis. He is the production engineer in the Water Business Unit at the Antigua, Antigua Public Utilities Authority. And do remember, viewers and listeners, do conserve water. We'll take a break and good morning and take a barbuda.